Alright guys, this is Reviews and More, and uh, this is a definitely a different kind of video. This was more or less, I got a wild hair on my butt and I wanted to see what this is all about. And um, we recently upgraded all of our Roku items to um, either Express or Sticks from Amazon. So either Amazon, Amazon Fire Sticks or the Roku Express. We've been upgrading our dumb TVs. And this is an old, old, old Roku 2. Don't confuse this. This is not a video about the new Roku 2. I'm not breaking open a $100 Roku. Um, so this is what's on the inside of an old Roku 2. If you watch this video, you'll notice that it's going very fast because I could not figure out how to get this damn thing open. And I didn't want to look it up online because I'm putting a video out about it anyway. Turns out if you pop open or remove the little rubberized footing on the Roku 2 at, underneath their screws, you can just unscrew it and it's a lot easier. I was trying to pry it open. God knows what kind of damage I did to it. But it doesn't really matter, and this is a way to destroy it without with having our stuff on there, because technically our Amazon account is still on there and resetting it, and it wasn't really working well anyway. And we just want to get rid of it, and this is a cool way to get rid of it. Um, the Roku 2 came out, God, it must be five years ago at this point at least, and the, to put some age on it, the AV cables attached to it. That's how old this thing is, so relative technology, like you can't, it's hard to buy any periphery now with AV cables on it unless you go looking for one. Like the new Rokus, they, for the most part, they all just have a uh, an HDMI cable on it. That's about it. So that's kind of updates that have been happening with it. Um, the biggest thing I thought was strange about this was just how robust it was. It took a lot of prying for me to screw up the way to open this. But once you get it open, it's not too difficult to like just look around and poke around. You can, In theory, you could just take this thing apart, put it back together, and mess around with it. It's not going to hurt it at all. Um, the only thing I did, I started taking off the heat sinks, which are the little metal pieces. Because I want to see what was under them. Because I noticed the actual, uh, once you see this in just a moment, the CPU itself doesn't actually have a heat sink on it. There's nothing really there. It has, I think it has a heat spreader, which is the out the thing, the large thing that looks like the CPU sitting on top of. And I guess that's even call a CPU, it's called a processor because it's so tiny. Um, but I'm going to basically show you what the parts look like and they're actually and the specs on there. So you had to go look, I had to go find them based on the serial numbers and to put some age on me. I'm sitting there trying to look at them with my eyes. And I couldn't do it. I had to turn my camera back on just to zoom in to see what these itty bitty numbers and letters had on there. But I was actually kind of uh, a little floored by it just because how much went, goes into these little things just even five years ago. And this thing's so obsolete now. Like you couldn't give this thing away unless you just didn't know what you're looking at. And uh, if you take a look, it's, it's just really kind of cool. I, th I find this stuff very interesting just because you just see this this change happening over time. And something that, because I grew up with, like, the specs on this little Roku would have been a big deal in a computer, like, on a desktop. So now it's just, but now this is obsolete in 2019 by several years. And if you look there, you'll see on um, the first item is the Samsung actual DRAM. So this is a 256 little uh, chip. So it's set to go into, like, a 4 gig stick. Like, this is one piece of what would be in a 4 gig stick. So this is a 256 megabyte stick of DRAM, and it's DDR3, which is kind of cool. So this is really just a mini computer. It's like it uses all the same components, and it's like my computer I'm rendering this on is an old AM3 Plus motherboard, so it's got DDR3 RAM, just a lot more of it, so it's kind of neat. And then you got the Toshiba um, memory stick. It's just, this is just the flash memory. This is a uh, two, 256 megabytes of flash memory. This is probably why this Roku was having so many issues later in its life because these apps have gotten so much more bulky over time that 256 megabytes is not going to do it. And that, and the same thing with the DDR3 uh, RAM stick from Samsung in there, it's just not enough to process functionally some of these more bulkier apps. All right, now you're going to see me start ripping things apart and it's going to make you a cringy cringe if you don't like this. But since this is old anyway, don't worry about it. Uh, this is the uh, wireless card. I didn't know what this was. I knew there was a wireless adapter somewhere in there, like some kind of some kind of card to manage the wireless function. I just never seen one that had to have a heat spreader on it before. The notion of putting a heat spreader on a wireless card, and I assume that's what this little rubberized piece is for, is to actually be a heat spreader. But I was kind of floored by it. I thought that was very strange that it required a heat spreader because I've never known a wireless card to get hot like they. But apparently it does. So I'm not. I looked it up. This is the dual band LAN. Uh, wireless LAN card in there and I was kind of a, I was kind of floored by that. I thought it was very interesting that it would take that kind of heat dissipation to make it work, but I guess that's what it does. And this thing would get so hot. It had no heat uh, reduction in it at all. The best thing you could do is just let it sit and blow a fan on it. It would get so daggone hot. And there's the specs for it from Broadcom. And that seems to be the brand that they use is Broadcom, but now they even they life cycle this thing's old as well. Like everything on this item is obsolete at this point. And then the last thing I'm going to look at is the actual um, 
I guess the CPU of the itty bitty teeny tiny Roku computer, but it's just a central processor. So I mean, it's super low tech compared to what would be nowadays as far as what even the Roku would have on it. Like I think I think the new stream players now have like quad core processors on them. Like they're itty bitty teeny tiny quad cores. This is a 600 megabyte pro uh, megahertz. Excuse me, not megabyte. This is a 600 megahertz processor. So very very small. It does not have a lot of computing power. And I'm guessing that little pad it's on is meant to be some form of heat dissipation because otherwise it makes no sense to have that pad in that shape. But it's definitely just neat seeing what amounts to an itty bitty computer. And I've looked online, there's a community that tries to mod these things and it's just not functional for modding because of the nature of it. But like, it's just amazing to me how much this has changed because I grew up and again, 600 megahertz on a desktop when I was growing up, that was a big deal. And now it's like, this is just a toy. It's in more, more point of fact, it's an obsolete toy. So that's the, what's amazing to me. And if guys, if you don't like this video, just thumb it down and I'll remove it. I, this is just more when, me kind of pontificating on just how amazing some of the streaming stuff is and how much advancement has happened in such a short amount of time. Thanks for watching.